Hi, I'm TR and this is my Mid-Century Ranch Home Renovation Project. In this episode we're going to be talking about the inspection, uh, getting some measurements taken, and getting a drawing done of the project. One of the first things you need to get done is an inspection. And that's just a great idea if you're buying any house, anytime. Uh, you want to get a qualified home inspector in there and uh, get somebody to take a look at it. I did not do that. Uh, the reason is, is that I've been around construction and houses and built my own house and all that stuff for many, many years. And so I feel very comfortable being able to walk into a building like this and pick up on 99% of all the really serious issues. There may have been a couple things that I might have overlooked, but when I went through and took my dimensions and videoed the property so I would have that reference to go back to when I was putting together my drawings, the inspection, whether it comes from a home inspector or yourself, is going to drive the projects you need to accomplish. And we're going to be talking about how that all ties together in the next episode when we get into the project planning piece of this. The measuring and the inspection kind of go hand in hand, at least they do for me, because they help me drive the project planning that's going to come up. And the video is super handy, so you can refer back to it if you don't have access to the property like I do in this particular case, um, because I haven't closed on the house yet. One of the other things to do when you're doing your inspection um, is to look for code issues, safety issues. And when I was doing the inspection and measurements, I found a number of issues that are going to need to be addressed. I don't have a lot of them on the drawing yet because I just barely got this drawing kind of fixed and finished and fitting right. But uh, the back steps coming out of the house and onto the deck uh, are really dangerous. Uh, there's a little corner piece of concrete that's been poured in there and that step is too narrow and it's a real trip hazard. But what I'm going to do is just redesign the deck a little bit. I'm going to take those stairs out. You'll come out of the house onto the deck and then from the deck we'll go down to the grass on a set of wooden steps, not concrete like they are now. And that'll help me code. You gotta get some measurements and get a drawing put together. There's several ways you can do that. You can do that yourself. I mean, just grab a tape measure and go around like I did in my house and start to take some measurements. Okay, from the front door to the edge of that jam, looks to be 37 and a half inches. And from this corner to the edge of the door is 17. on the door is a three footer but there's some things you should probably do first and it'll kind of help you along and the first thing I like to do is I just like to sketch the floor plan and so um, I kind of know what the house looks like uh, because I was over and I've recorded it taken some video you know so I could uh, refer back to that as I go through and start to get this drawn up and to scale which is really important to get it to scale Oh, and before I forget, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, share this with your friends if you're so inclined. Uh, your questions or comments are always welcomed, as is your patronizing my Amazon store. It all helps quite a bit, and so I do appreciate it when you do it. So let's get started with this sketch. If this is a new purchase, you're going to get an appraisal, and that appraisal is going to have a rough floor plan or a rough sketch of what it looks like. And I have that. And so if we go over here to my workstation, this is from my appraisal of the property. And you can see here, the appraiser gives you the rough dimensions of it right out of the chute. And so this is a great place to start. So I'm just gonna copy this drawing right here uh, onto this here. And so we'll just come in here and this is gonna be approximate. Uh, it's not gonna be to scale yet, but we're just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kind of start to do a layout here. And I'm gonna say that's 24 feet. Uh, let's come down here like this and then uh, we'll go over here and we'll say that's 35 feet and we end up with something that looks like this. This is just a rough sketch of the floor plan. This is the deck. This is the dining room, living room, kitchen, bath, bedroom, and the garage. And again, I just copied the dimensions off the appraiser's drawing and so this is close enough. Now, you're going to have to get some tighter dimensions. And so I went back over to this house and I took a lot more dimensions 
and kind of got this layout. Let me get this turned around so it kind of looks right. So here's our deck back here. Here's the front of the house, the main door, the kitchen, the bedroom. You can see here I've got some overall dimensions that I've taken the width and the length of the bedroom. The bath is five by seven, I've noted that. And in the case of the kitchen, it's gonna be one of the first things I really wanna tackle. And so I'm gonna be planning that out in a future episode here. But I've taken really careful dimensions in the kitchen. So again, this is the front of the house. And what you're seeing right here is basically, that's the cabinets, the overhead cabinets. And then I've taken really close dimensions of the width at 103 and a half and uh, the, the length of 163 that works out to like 13 foot 7 inches and I think that is uh, like oh I don't know <laughs> it's not very much it's a really teeny kitchen and it's going to be a real challenge to do something inventive with it to make it workable but that's coming in a future episode oh which reminds me I'm going to link to a playlist right here that has all of the episodes in order so you can go back and catch up on any part of the project and see how we got to where we are. I've got this all drawn up now. I think we're in pretty good shape. Got pretty good dimensions on the kitchen. Now let's put it into a drawing that's to scale. The reason you need to put this in scale is because when you start to try to rearrange or move or add cabinets or you know do things like that, you need to know with precision about where those things are going to land because you need to know the length of your cabinets are gonna be the right lengths and they're gonna fit in the spaces that you have set up for them. And the only way to really do that accurately is by using a scale drawing. Now there's options to not have to do this yourself. Uh, in most any city, get on Craigslist or ask around and you're gonna find somebody that's gonna be able to do a dimension drawing for you. It's going to cost you two, three, four hundred dollars, depending upon how elaborate your house is, you know, how long it takes to get it drawn up. And then your only other alternative is to get an architect. In many cases, if you're changing the structure of the building, in other words, you're adding on or you're moving the bearing wall inside or anything like that, you're typically going to be required to get a building permit. The small amount of remodeling I'm going to do, I don't think I'll have to get a building permit, but we'll be talking about that in a future episode. The long and short of it is, you gotta get the drawings. You can do them yourself like I'm gonna do, but I have years and years of experience with CAD applications and doing the drawings. And there's a number of free ones out there you can use, but I'm gonna use one that I've used for many, many years, and it's actually running on this laptop you see right here, which is from 2011, and the application that's running on it I purchased in 2002. I might be outside of the licensing of this application at this point in time. I don't have a copy of it anywhere and I can't find it. So uh, I'm not gonna say the name, um, but you need to find some kind of a drawing program. I think there's one from Google. Uh, SketchUp is another one that I know of. In fact, I played with SketchUp a little bit, but I ended up going back to this just because I knew how to run it and I knew it would be faster and more efficient for me to just do it in the application that I've worked in for years. Now there's no way I can give you any kind of an idea about how to run a CAD application or how to do a drawing. I'm sure there's tutorials on YouTube University that you can pick up around doing the drawings and, CAD, and, and CADing them or getting them into SketchUp or any one of the other free applications that might be out there that do this kind of work. But if you do, it's going to save you tons of time because you're going to be able to do some really accurate estimating. And then you're going to also be able to start to play with things and see what you can do with them. For example, let's look at this drawing again over here. And here's my bathroom. Here's the dining room. Um, you can see this got this little kind of bump in here, alcove, I guess you might call that. And I think that by changing that one wall, I can greatly improve the bathroom just by moving this wall right here from there to right there. And I actually have a drawing of that. And so you can see there, just by rearranging that one wall, it's not a bearing wall, it's just a plumbing wall. And it's technically not even a plumbing wall, it's just a two by four wall. This wall here is gonna turn into a plumbing wall. And so I'm probably gonna have to replace this wall with two by six, just so I got room for the plumbing and stuff. But you can see just by rearranging that one wall, I think it greatly improved this bathroom. I'm gonna be able to potentially center the vanity on the window. I'm gonna to have to get some more Closer dimensions, I didn't get really tight dimensions in the bathroom, not as good as I did in the kitchen. 
Uh, so when I get possession of the house here in another 10 days, um, I'll get in and get that taken care of. But you can see, I've been able to rearrange this and kind of look at it and try to make some decisions on what I want to do with it. So I think you can see how easy it is to really do some really fun stuff with a CAD application like this. All right, so that's enough fun. Uh, you've got to get that dimension drawing taken care of first thing if you're going to do any kind of good project planning. It's especially important if you're going to be using contractors. If you're not going to be doing the labor yourself, then you're going to have to have some dimension drawings for those contractors to use so that you're going to get fair comparison quotes between the contractors because that's the way you're going to want to do this. In this particular case, I'm doing as much of this as I can practically and safely. And so that includes the drawing. So where we're at right now is, is that we've got our drawings done. We've got our inspection done. We've taken some close measurements. They need to be refined a little bit, but when we get into the house, we'll take care of that. Our next step is project planning. We're gonna take our inspection. We're gonna take our wish list. And then we're gonna be thinking about, okay, what do we need to do to be able to move in? Because there's a number of things that you can do before you move in, if you have that option that's going to make it so much easier to accomplish those projects. And in our case, you know, we're going to be stripping wallpaper, we're going to be removing the carpets and sanding the floors and refinishing them. All of that best done before you move in. And so that's going to be a part of the planning that we're going to be doing in the next episode. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, share it with your friends. That's always appreciated. Your questions or comments, very welcome below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I practically can. Your support of my Amazon store has been amazing and I do appreciate that great. So that'll have to do it. Thanks for watching. I sure do appreciate it. Until we get together for the next episode, peace.